Anger and frustration come to a boil tonight. Austin Waters seemed fairly confident the boil water notice would be lifted tonight by 7 p.m. Then that window was pushed between 7 and 9. Now Austin is dealing with another night of waiting for answers. The boil water notice is still in effect. Austin Water tweeted this out about an hour ago saying, quote, Austin Water crews are fully invested in lifting the boil water notice as soon as possible. We're waiting on all test results to be reviewed by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Again, officials told us earlier today they were on track to lift the boil water notice by tonight. As CBS Austin has reported, the boil water notice began Saturday night after, quote, operator error caused an issue over at the Ulrich water treatment plant. They say that resulted in high turbidity or murky looking water and there could be harmful bacteria present, which is why we're boiling our water. CBS Austin News has been following this frustration pretty closely over the last few days. We've been demanding answers from Austin Water and city leaders. Tonight, our team coverage continues. CBS Austin's Christian Flores has what you need to do once that order has been officially lifted, which is looking like tomorrow now. And Paige Hubbard was out in the community today learning how this is impacting Austinites. Christian, we'll start with you. What should folks do once that water restriction or the boil water alert is lifted so we can drink our water again? Well, even once that boil advisory is lifted, you might still have some of that contaminated water in your pipes. And I think a big thing a lot of people want to know tonight is uh, the person who's accountable for this error, will they be held accountable or reprimanded? And two, will we still have to pay a water bill while we deal with all of this? CBS Austin is still waiting on those answers. Live in downtown, Paige Chubb reporting, CBS Austin News. Thanks, Paige, and we'll continue to push for answers. Okay, this may be lifted tomorrow. No guarantees. For more on what you should do when that boil water notice is lifted, you heard from Christian. Just head over to cbsaustin.com. We have all of that information there. You'll also find the locations of water distribution sites, which look like they'll still have to be open tomorrow so you can get bottled water. Now, with the one-year anniversary of last year's deadly winter storm just one week away, a panel of energy experts took a look back at what happened today pointing out the mistakes and the progress made on the power grid. They admit the grid is in a better place today, but still needs a lot of work. Experts highlighted that winterizing power plants is an important improvement, but gas supply facilities also need to be winterized. They say last week's winter storm wasn't enough of a stress test. Well, the electric grid may have seen some improvements. Data is indicating that the gas supply chain is not ready for another extreme winter storm like winter storm Uri. The Railroad Commission says out of 4,000 natural gas facilities that have been inspected, 98% have been winterized. We reached temperatures in the upper 60s today. It was actually beautiful out there, very different from the temperatures we've been feeling. Chief Meteorologist Chicago Wheeler joins us now. Chicago, how's the rest of February looking? I know the next few days are looking great. They are looking great, Walt, and unlike a year ago where we were poised for setting multiple records, not only for the wintry precipitation, but also for the extremely cold temperatures, I'm pleased to say. Thanks, Chicago. It's too late for dozens of pets, but tonight the Georgetown City Council decided to move forward with the fire chief's recommendation to make new and existing pet resorts safer. This comes after dozens of pets were killed in the Ponderosa fire back in September. CBS Austin's Lindsay Regis has been following tonight's meeting and brings us the latest. Getting a true chance at the life they deserve. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Muggin for the cameras on cue. Now to a story of hope for our furry friends and family members. It was a celebration over at Austin Pets Alive today. The organization commemorating receiving their 100,000th rescue animal. Cooper right there. <laughs> That is great, right? That pup was uh, just picked up today that pushed them to that milestone. 14 years ago in 2008, Austin Pets Alive began its initiative to make Austin a no-kill city. At that point, Austin had a kill rate of about 87%. Today, they have a save rate of 97%. Austin Pets Alive is a really important asset in our community and the work that they do, the mission that they have here is imperative uh, in support of, of our four-legged friends and our furry friends. And right here, as you can see, the evidence of the good, strong work that they do every day in our community. And I couldn't be more grateful for the work that APA does in our community. That was Cooper. 
in her hand. Cooper didn't last but five minutes. <laughs> Good news. Their 100,000th rescue, Cooper, tells, they tell us he's already have a, he already has a family lined up. Good for you, Cooper. All right, if you put on a couple of pounds during the pandemic, you're not alone. We'll tell you why sleep could be the culprit of your weight gain. We are still in stage five. We are, however, moving towards stage four. And that will likely happen in the next 10 days or so. Promising news from Austin Public Health today. We'll tell you what this means for big upcoming events like South by Southwest. CBS Austin News begins with breaking news. Tonight we begin with a live look from Kyiv, Ukraine, where CBS News reporters on the ground there right now say they've heard multiple explosions within the last few hours. This comes as Russian President Vladimir Putin announced he is moving military operations into eastern Ukraine, essentially triggering war. President Joe Biden released a statement tonight saying in part that Putin has chosen war, which will bring a catastrophic loss of life. He goes on to say, Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring, and the United States and its allies and partners will respond in a united and decisive way. The world will hold Russia accountable. During Putin's address, he says the military operation in Ukraine is intended to protect civilians, adding that Russia doesn't have a goal to occupy the country. The international community says otherwise. However, Putin warned that if anyone attempted to intervene, that would lead to, quote, consequences they have never seen. Now, there is a large Ukrainians in Austin Facebook group who, as you can imagine, are watching the events closely tonight, and they're reaching out to friends and relatives in Ukraine tonight. Stephanie Dobush joins us live now over the phone. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. I can only imagine it's been an emotional night. We have a picture on the screen now. Um, I assume that's family in Ukraine. Have you been able to reach anyone in Ukraine tonight? No, not tonight. I've been trying, but I haven't been able to reach anybody. Uh, Stephanie, and these are your family members there. You mentioned you have aunts, uncles, cousins. In the, mm -hmm. the days that have been leading up to this, as this has been escalating, have you spoken to them? What have their thoughts been on what is happening there? Um, yeah, we spoke several times because I was concerned. And I think they were. we were all kind of hoping that this was um, another game by Putin and it wouldn't lead to anything. And, you know, we were all just kind of downplaying it as maybe psychological warfare and it would all end um so this is kind of surprising because we didn't really feel like this is this is how it would be, what it would lead to and so i'm a little shocked <laughs> stephanie uh, we can totally understand that shock tonight and we've been seeing a lot of pictures of civilians actually training to fight you know this massive army of the russians have your relatives been training to fight and what's your yes. greatest fear um, yeah, well, yeah, my family members um, train train other people in weapons training because they have some military experience. So they're training people themselves and other people in the area to be prepared for an attack. And, you know, we heard President Putin talking today saying that he says that this operation is intended to protect civilians. As someone with family and loved ones there, is that what civilians in Ukraine believe about this? Absolutely not. They, they don't believe they're going to be safe at all if, if Putin and, and Russia invade like this. They are in, in terrible danger. Their lives are at stake. They could be killed by millions. This is, this is not new history for us. Russia has been attacking and invading and killing Ukrainian people for 400 years. They just can't leave us alone. Stephanie, my last name is Makaborski. My grandmother is from Ukraine. And, what? you know, a lot of my family members are in Canada right now trying to reach out and see if they have any friends or relatives. Is there any way you can talk to somebody online or, or phone lines, or has everything been just radio silent or dead yeah i just haven't been able to reach any i'm i'm sending messages i'm calling and i'm not getting anything so i don't know if they you know they know what's going on and they've um they're just preparing for an attack and they're not answering phones or i, I have no idea what's going on but it's it's scary well a lot of people monitoring the facebook page uh, Ukrainians in Austin. Stephanie Dobush, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know it's going to be a sleepless night. We'll contact you again. Hopefully, please let us know if you make contact with any of your family members. 
I will. Thank you so much. And again, this is a live picture from Kyiv as we're monitoring the situation in Ukraine. There will be special reports from CBS and CBS Austin overnight on air and online. And of course, on CBS Austin this morning. Stay tuned for the latest updates. Just terrifying. A frantic scene outside this Walmart in Round Rock today. People running for their lives as a tornado approaches. Texans asked to take cover today after several twisters touched down in central Texas. Take a look at the storm's path. Just after 520 this afternoon, the first tornado warning was issued for Blanco County and many more would follow through the evening. We know at least five tornadoes touched down in our viewing area. With those tornadoes came severe thunderstorms, as well as destructive hail and winds. We've received word that the storm system was especially destructive in Round Rock, Elgin, and Gerald. And now that the tornadoes have blown through, the cleanup begins tonight. And tonight, CBS Austin is set up across Central Texas in those areas that saw the most damage. We're trying to find out the true extent of the storm system damage right now. We're going to start off with reporter Christian Flores in Round Rock tonight. Christian, what are you seeing? Well, we're just in a neighborhood just off of Green Lawn. I kind of want to show you what we're seeing out here. A neighbor told me the, na the tornado basically jumped one row of houses that were pretty much unscathed. And you can just see. Jessica Taylor, CBS Austin News. That's good to hear. Thanks, Jessica. Here's a look at a tornado that was twisting through the Elgin area earlier today. We also got some images of the damage that was left behind by this tornado. You can see this farmland destroyed with many of the buildings torn up. We'll have more of those pictures for you of the tornado on cbsaustin.com. It's been a wild afternoon all across Central Texas today. Chief Meteorologist Chicago Windler spent three hours wall to wall updating people about the dangers heading their way and all the tornado warnings that actually then turned into tornadoes. Chicago, I've been here in and around Central Texas for years. I have never seen anything like this. How are things looking now? Well, fortunately, things are getting better, although we're not totally out of the woods. Look at this tornado outbreak. Of course, the Round Rock damage we talked about, that could have been a continuous tornado. Or the, the state uh, is standing with the people of Williamson County, shoulder to shoulder. Governor Greg Abbott tonight providing an update in Georgetown. He called it, quote, a miracle that two confirmed tornadoes in Williamson County did not cause any deaths. CBS Austin's Betty Cross joins us live at the Williamson County Emergency Services Operations Center. Betty, the governor says the state is prepared to provide whatever it takes to help those in need. That's right. Two disaster declarations are going to be issued to help people deal with these storms. But right now they say they just feel very lucky that no one was killed and there were no serious injuries in Williamson County. Reporting live in Williamson County. Betty Cross, CBS Austin News. And again, Dell Diamond is operating as a shelter tonight with the Red Cross there helping people out as well. And the early warnings from Chief Meteorologist Chicago Windler save lives. So don't forget to download the CBS Austin weather app as the weather continues to change. You can count on our weather team to keep you up to date throughout the night and early tomorrow morning. You can also head on over to CBSAustin.com. There you'll find the latest headlines and everything else you need to know to keep your family safe. Our severe weather coverage continues tonight. Still ahead, we check in with other parts of the Lone Star State and the wicked weather that's impacting them now. You're watching CBS Austin News at 10. Central Texas. Trusted.